Hello, my German friends. Welcome back. Today, um, interesting video. What Germans can say that Americans can't. I don't know what this is trying to imply. Um, is it saying like that American, the American language, like English does not have the words needed to say these, to convey these uh, feelings or emotions or, or are they saying that it's illegal to say these things in America? What could that be? There's not a lot of illegal, illegal things to say in America. So I'm, I'm interested. These German words have no English translation. So what okay. do they mean? That's super interesting to think about. I love this channel, by the way. Go check out this passport. Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. I am Donnie. And I'm Aubrey. And we are two Americans currently living in Germany and sharing all of our experiences living and traveling throughout Europe. As you all know, Aubrey and I have been learning German while we- I don't know why I just stuck my tongue out. We have been living in Germany for the past <laughs> two years, and we have shared in many videos the struggles we endure to learn this schwere Sprache. Well, what? <laughs> one of those struggles is from time to time- Spre Endure to learn this schwere Sprache. Schwer Sprache. Okay. Well, one of those struggles is from time to time, we see a German word we don't recognize, look it up, and come to find out, there is no way of translating that word because an English word literally does not exist that means the same thing. That's and that is exactly- And as an English person, I feel like I can't even think of what that word would be. Like, what word do I not know? <laughs> what we are gonna talk about today in our video Overheard a German word. That I mean, I guess there certainly have been times where you're trying to convey something and I can't think of the words to say. English is unheard. Maybe uh, German has the answer. One of our favorite times of year in Germany is the Christmas season when you can stand around a fire pit, listening to Christmas carols, laughing with wow. friends, and sipping on a warm drink. <laughs> well is that what your Santas look like? Holy. <laughs> <laughs> Am I being offensive? If that is that supposed to be, is that Santa, or is that? I'm gonna stop. <laughs> Drink. Well, there also is one that looks so good. One of our favorite untranslatable words that can describe this moment and atmosphere. I love how this all the decor and stuff is like reminiscent of what it's like here in America, but it's different. I like that. It's like a little twist, like an alternate dimension. <laughs> and that is gemütlichkeit. Put gemütlichkeit. Put this word in a translator and you probably will get a result of something like coziness. However, that really doesn't explain what this word is supposed to fully represent. The Wikipedia entry on Gemütlichkeit describes, Cozy captures an element of it, but crucially lacks those of friendliness and belonging. To be honest, this is a word that I don't think we can truly fully understand the emotional feeling behind what Gemütlichkeit means. I'm Gemütlichkeit? I mean, I understand what coziness feels like and the description of the Christmas market feels like what I think it should mean, but- it So is it exclusive to Christmas? Like that feeling? No, it's gotta be more broad it's than that. those right? little extra pieces beyond just coziness that I can't quite wrap my head around exactly what the word is trying to convey. Whenever I was looking into trying to figure out what this word truly represents, I kept seeing examples that actually quintessential gemütlichkeit would be found at a beer garden on a nice summer evening. The most famous Oktoberfest song- How do you use it in a, in a sentence? Song though? sung about every 20 minutes at Oktoberfest called Ein Prosit says, Ein Prosit, Ein Prosit, der Gemütlichkeit. Sorry for killing it by just saying it, but I'm not going to sing it. Oktoberfestsongs.com tries to help explain the definition of gemütlichkeit and why it is sung at Oktoberfest like this. English translation is coziness or good cheer, but gemütlichkeit goes cheer, a step okay. further and encapsulates a feeling of belonging, social acceptance, and leaving your troubles at the door. So help all of- That's like the most beautiful- So gemütlichkeit is basically how you want to feel. It's like the ultimate feeling of just- contentness in a social setting like you're you're just part you, you belong and you're cozy it sounds wonderful <laughs> all of us better understand the emotion behind this word by writing in the comments we all need a little gemütlichkeit what type of scene or moment best describes gemütlichkeit to you gemütlichkeit. Gemütlichkeit. 
Before we get to our next word, we make videos based on what it seems like you guys like the most. So hit that like and subscribe buttons to let us know that you are enjoying them. I think we all you know, can relate to the English word homesick, which of course describes the feeling of being away from home for a long period of time and wanting to go back. German also mm -hmm. has this word which directly translates to Heimweh, with Heim, Heim meaning home and Weh meaning hurt. Heim However, Weh. German is very interesting in that it also has another Heim word that Weh. English doesn't have, Fernweh. Fernweh is the opposite of homesickness as it is the longing and hurt to travel or see far away oh. I've been feeling some fair way <laughs> especially watching all these German videos and stuff I need to see the world. Places. It actually <laughs> is funny because since English doesn't fernweh. have a translation for this word, when you put fernweh into a translator, you will likely get wanderlust. But wanderlust is a German word that English borrowed because of our lack of a word for this feeling. However, wanderlust. In German, I've never heard that word. Wanderlust and fernweh are actually two different things. A BBC article explains fernweh actually grew out of wanderlust, a popular word in the 19th century German romantic movement which valued a love of nature that stemmed from a sudden Teutonic interest in exploring Central Europe's forests and untrammeled landscapes. To put it in a way that we think we have come to understand, Wanderlust would be the feeling you could have had in summer of 2019 when you were looking at your holidays and thinking about traveling to a different country. You had a desire to travel and maybe it had been a little while so you were eager to do so. Fernve, on the other hand, would be more like it's 2021. You had a trip planned for the spring of 2020 20, but it was canceled, you were put into lockdown, and now you have a very strong physical ache or pain because you really, really want to get out and travel, but you just can't. So to translate <laughs> fernweh as okay. wanderlust or wanderlust just doesn't convey the emotional difference that exists in the German language between these two words. But I guess it is the best that English has figured out to do without a word of its own to express this feeling. Yeah, we don't have any more. I can't think of any. There's like a... I'm I'm trying to think of a word that just means like you're you're at home and you're like um becoming like like cabin fever. Like cabin fever is um nah. well it's a movie. It's like, you know, result re, you know, it's it's irritability resulting from long confinement indoors. I don't think I don't think that's the same. Sometimes untranslatable German words aren't untranslatable because of cultural differences and the lack of language development around an emotion or activity that another culture can't relate to. Sometimes these words are very relatable between two cultures, but German just has a much more concise way of describing a situation by a single word, unlike in English where we use an entire sentence to describe a situation. This is exactly the case with another one of my hmm. favorite. I have noticed Germany has super long words, which makes me want to Google how many words are there in the, well, I'm going to do the English language first. 171,000 German language. Five million? Wait, what? Can this be true? <laughs> Five million? And we have 171,000? Well, no wonder you have words that can just like say a whole sentence in English. Untranslatable German words. Verschlimm bessern. Verschlimm comes from bessern. The German word verschlimmern, meaning to make worse, and verbessen, meaning to make better. So how can a word make sense if it literally means to make worse, to make better? Well, although English <laughs> doesn't have a direct one word translation, that obviously does not mean that we are not immune to this experience. And we would just say, you were trying to make it better, but you actually just made it worse. <laughs> I love that. We need this word. Yes, simply having one word for Schlimmbessern is much more concise. The German embassy in Washington has a blog and in it they describe an example of for Schlimmbessern as, for example, a company may have updated their iPhone app to add more features, but the update may have made it more confusing for users to navigate. This hmm. would be an example of for Schlimmbessern. Why are they going to call out iPhone like that? The update actually made the product worse. <laughs> 
Honestly, the next word is one that I hope is the last time we will ever mention it in a video because it seems to be working its way into way too many of our videos recently. And that is... Zitzpinkler. As we have discussed in other videos, Zitzpinkler. In Germany, unlike in the US, it is common practice for men to sit when they urinate and therefore the term assigned to a man who sits while he pees is a Zitzpinkler. <laughs> oh man, I know a couple guys who do that, so now I know what to call them. <laughs> I'm sure this Zitzpinkler. explanation is unnecessary, but Zitz comes from the word Zitzen, meaning to sit, and Pinkler comes from pinkeln, meaning to urinate. <laughs> this literally isn't even something I had ever heard of men doing until I came to Germany, and therefore we have no translation of this word <laughs> since the expectation for the most part is that you, as a man, just stand when you urinate. However, an interesting note is that in Germany, even with the culture of men sitting while urinating, there is another meaning of the word Zitzpinkler. According to the BBC, but those who choose to sit are often referred to as a Zitzpinkler, implying it is not masculine behavior. Oh. We have heard that you can also- So, why does anyone do it? I'm legitimately intri intrigued. If, I mean, if no one, if no one has any, like, um, insecurity about it, then yeah, of course they're gonna do whatever they wanna do, but as a person who stands while I pee, that seems more convenient, typically, than sitting down. So why does, because not a lot of people here in the States, I said I know a couple people. Um, I know like one, I think. So call someone a zitz It's very rare. Pinkler to describe them not as someone who sits to you. But I just want to know, like, do you guys have really comfortable seats? Because I, I don't see any issue with it. I'm just saying... That's really interesting because nobody here does that. Urinate, but as what we would call in English a wimp or a wuss. I haven't actually heard that use ourselves. So can you guys let us know if you have heard that being used as a slander as well in the comments? One of every German's favorite words in the German language and would be one of every English speaking person's favorite words as well if we just had a translation. I'm talking Feierabend. As you know by Feierabend. And now most of these untranslatable words are actually compound words of multiple German words stuck together to give us something unique. So if we look at the parts of the word, are you able to figure out what this one? <laughs> no, but can I guess? Feierabend. Feierabend. I'm gonna say it's like, um, fire a bend. I'm gonna say this word means that, that you have like a, f a fire in you to go, um, go uh, work out. One word might mean. The first part of the word comes from die Feier, which could mean the celebration, and der Abend, meaning the evening. So together we have something. I was, uh, not close. Something like the celebration evening or the Fire evening bit. of okay. celebration. And I okay. doubt that that actually gets across what Feierabend literally means, and this word does have multiple uses or meanings, but the most common will be heard at the end of the workday, and duden.de defines it as free time following the working day. This word has many different uses, and depending on the use, would be translated differently in English, but we really don't have a translation for this word. One of the best ways of trying to translate it would often just be the end of the workday. But there are other uses, like it would oh. just mean have a good evening if you said schöne Feierabend as you left the office. Or you could use it just to call the end of something. To be completely honest, this is a word that I think the emotion kind of eludes us, and I'm sure some of you can better explain the feeling of what Feierabend means Feierabend. better, so help us out in the comments below. So as you can see, as we struggle to try and translate untranslatable words, it sounds like it's just, yay, it's over. We are struggling to wrap our minds around what some of these words even mean and how culture has <laughs> seemed to dictate that some languages have words that others do not have. There are actually a ton more of these words still out there and these were just a few that we like, but go ahead and leave your favorite untranslatable words in I the comments more. below and what they mean, if you can find a way to describe it. To see who made it this far into the video, the random question of the week is, Bacon or sausage? Sausage. Thank you for watching today, folks. 
That was super fun. Thank you, Passport 2. That was extremely entertaining. I hope you guys are having a fantastic time way over that way. And you guys are really far that way. And I hope it's I hope it's going really great over there. And I hope to see you guys again on, well, I guess Monday. Because I make a video every weekday about Germany. I react to a video. Have a great day, guys. Goodbye. Fire oven.